Hey, this is Matt again, and I am back giving you another tutorial. This one is going to be the first of a longer series, the Advanced Programming Tutorials. And in these tutorials, I'm going to be showing you how to take your game from the simple maze game we have now to something you could potentially sell. Now, this is going to take some effort, and it's going to take some time. So, hopefully this tutorial series will be a lot longer than the basic tutorial series, and it will make your game a lot better. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing I want to show you guys how to do is improve your enemies. Because if, you ever, if you've ever played a good game, which I'm sure you have, the enemies don't move in circles all the time or squares. So we need to have a smarter enemy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my enemy object. I'm going to go add event step. Just normal step. Now step is pretty much the equivalent of always. It will always do this. So what we're going to want to do is under the move tab we're going to go under down here to steps and we're going to say step avoiding. Drag that out. And this is a block that allows, that's going to allow the enemy to step towards the player. And by step I mean move. So it's going to move towards the player. So the point it's going to be stepping to is going to be um, for x it's going to be player dot x and for y it's going to be player dot y so it will step towards player dot x and player dot y and we'll just keep the speed the same at 3 and it's going to avoid solid objects you can set it to all instances but I would recommend doing solid so that way it will only avoid walls right now but you can make other things solid if you want it to avoid them too so now that we have this we can um, click OK. Now in our creative end of this, we want to get rid of set path because we don't want to move in a square anymore. So now let's go test our game and see if our enemy programming works. You can see here that the enemy is moving towards the player. And when it collides, we die. And when the player dies, it doesn't have anywhere to go, so it will automatically return to the upper left corner of the screen, which is actually kind of good. It makes it look better, so it looks like they just don't stop when the player dies. Now, I also had a suggestion that um, we should have it so that it's not as easy for the player to die, so let's go to our player. And collision with the enemy, we are going to... Um, we are not going to, well, actually, well, let's, let's set up some health for our game. That'll be easy. So, under the player, we're going to say, add event, create. And we're going to go down to score, and we're going to drag out this health, set health, and we're going to set health to 100. So, our health's at 100. Now, when we collide with the enemy, we're going to drag out another health, and we're going to say, we're going to set our health to minus 1 or minus two I should say. Well you you can pick what you want, but you're probably thinking, Matt, why are you only taking away two of your hundred health every time you collide with an enemy? Well, let's say the enemy touches you and it stays there for a second. Um that's gonna do a lot more than um two damage because every time the computer checks what the collisions are, it's gonna subtract two. So basically the computer goes through its cycle of checking everything about 30 times a second. So if you're touching the um, enemy for um, two seconds or one second, sorry, you're going to be taking 60 damage, which probably be about right. You can mess with it. I'll set it back to one, so it's only 30 damage every second. And if you don't quite understand the whole, um, the computer's going through its process checking for collisions, just hang on, and I'm sure you'll get it eventually. And since we want to subtract one, not set to negative one, we finally hit relative. So, so now we have our health set up, and let's go into our drawer, and we can make a health bar. So our drawer is where we're going to use all the draw functions, so we're going to go down to score and drag out draw health. Now it gives you four, four coordinates, two sets of coordinates, one, two x's and two y's. This is the, um, this is like x1 and y1. The, that's the upper left corner of the health bar, and X2 and Y2 is the bottom right corner of the health bar. So, 
we want to make this not overlap with our score. So I'm just going to say 100 for the X, so it will move it to the right 100, and then I'll just move it down 16 pixels. Now for X number 2, this is deciding how long it's going to be. I'm going to make the health bar 100 pixels long. So 100 more than 100 is 200. And then we have to add whatever how um, uh, wide or tall we want the health bar to 16. So um, I'm just going to say 64. That will make it 48 pixels tall. And the back color green red. You can You can mess with this, but I like it the way it is right now. So now let's go into our game and see if our health bar shows up. You can see that our health bar is here. And our enemy is going to try his best to come and uh, kill us here. He's coming. So when our, we collide with the enemy, you can see that our health just shrank down. You can see that. That we're dying. Now we haven't programmed that when the health reaches zero, the player dies yet. So that's going to be the next step. And also, I'm just going to resize our health bar really quick because obviously it doesn't really look like a health bar right now. I'm going to make it 200 pixels long. And I'm only going to make it 16 pixels tall, so I'm going to set Y2 to 32. And I think that'll be good. So, um, actually, I'm going to set Y1 to 0. So it's 32 pixels tall, but it starts at the top of the screen. Hopefully, you're under starting to understand the graph system of Game Maker because that's one of the main parts you need to understand. So, that's what we need to do for the drawing part of the health bar. Now, if we go into the player, um, when we collide with the enemy, I'm going to drag down a test variable. And if variable health is equal to value, or I should say, is smaller than zero. So if we've lost all of our health, actually I'll say smaller than one, because I can't, I'm not sure if the health can actually go to zero. So if health is smaller than zero, then we'll drag out our little trash can here. We're going to destroy the instance of the player, and we will restart the room. And it will fade out and fade in. Now, this is one more thing I need to go over. If an if is going to ca cause more than one thing to happen, um, like if you just had the if and the destroy instance, it would be fine. But since this if is causing two things to happen, we're going to need to group it. So we're under control, and you see these like up arrow and down arrow. We're just going to put one on the top. And one on the bottom. Oops. And one on the bottom. So that way, Game Maker knows that these two things go with this if. It it just makes it so it avoids some errors and stuff, and it makes it so it works. So now, for health smaller than one, we're gonna die, and the room's gonna restart. So let's go test this out in our game. So now our health bar looks a lot better, as you can see, and our enemy's gonna come chase us here. And when he collides with us, you can see our health's going down. And I'm running away from him as fast as I can. Health's going down, and when our health reaches zero, we die and the room restarts. And as you as you know, we can still shoot our enemy to destroy him with our bullets. I mean if you want, you can you can make enemies indestructible. You can do all kinds of stuff because with the programming I've showed you so far you can create hundreds of different kinds of enemies. You may not think of it, but once you start thinking about it, it, it will amaze you of how many enemies you can create with this simple programming. So that's about it for this tutorial. That was just a tutorial on making your AIs more, a lot more advanced. During the next tutorial, I'm going to be showing you an introduction to the Game Maker language, which is based off of C. So that's going to be a that you're not going to be really adding anything to that the game that tutorial, but you'll learn the game maker language. So thanks for watching this tutorial. Subscribe, add it to your favorites, and stay tuned for the rest of the tutorials. Have fun with the game maker.